Adrian Schrinner joins me. And, Lord Mayor, you've led from the front. You've been out there uh, picking up rubbish, trying to fix up stuff. But this is a big mess, this flood, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely, Gary. I mean, the, the, the sheer amount of rain, and you mentioned, uh, you know, some of the details, has been extraordinary. Never before have we seen in Brisbane's recorded history this much rain in a short period of time. And so it was more than the 2011 flood in terms of rain by a country mile. It was more than uh, the 74 flood. In fact, the most rain of any period in our recorded history. So uh, it's just quite an extraordinary weather system. And even just yesterday, we had another downpour uh, that came out of the blue as well. So, uh, you know, this, this was extreme, extreme weather. Uh, but one of the things we know is that Brisbane residents are resilient. South East Queensland residents are resilient and they're doing their best now to, to try and recover their city, recover their homes, recover their businesses. Yeah, there's a big cost associated with this. I, I hear that the, 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 the matters or the amount has ticked over a billion. Some are saying it's going to be three billion. This is a massive, massive hit to Brisbane City uh, and indeed to Logan and all the other cities around South East Queensland. And I know people watching at a state will say, oh, Brisbane floods. This is enormous. Tens of thousands of people displaced through floodwaters, a shortage of accommodation, food because the main Queensland uh, food supply damaged uh, at the Brisbane markets. This impacts on people who didn't even have their homes uh, drowned by all this flooding rain. Yeah, look, you're absolutely right. I mean, when it comes to the, the facts and figures on how many homes were flooded, how many businesses were flooded, we're looking at uh, around, at this current uh, point in time, around 20,000 homes and businesses were flooded just in Brisbane, and then add on to that the uh, areas around us that also had uh, devastating flooding. Uh, that does have a massive flow-on effect, uh, a big hit to the city. And you pointed out the other the other issues with the supply chain. So one of our most important industrial uh, and warehousing areas is in the suburb of Rockley, where the Brisbane markets are. And that that was underwater and parts of it are still underwater right now today. Yeah. A week later. I mean, it's, it's, it is hard to believe. The community cleanup was meant to start today. You convened what you call Mud Army 2.0. The Premier stopped it yesterday because she said uh, it was going to get too dangerous. OK, it stopped. But it seems like a mud militia was out there today. You were part of it. You were getting the troops organised. You, you weren't the only one. There were thousands of people, young people as well as old, all wanting to lend a hand to fellow Queenslanders. Yeah, we've had the, the unofficial Mud Army working all week. And so that's the Mud Army of, of friends and neighbours helping each other. Uh, and that's, you know, that, that's what happens. So straight away, it's the neighbours that check on each other, help each other. Uh, on one side of the street, they may be flooded. On the other side of the street, maybe not. Um, those who weren't flooded help those who were. Neighbours who were all flooded helping each other and then friends and family coming in. Uh, what we're doing with the Mud Army 2.0 is actually making sure that no one's left behind. So those people that may not have had the level of help that others have, uh, we're coming through this weekend uh, with a massive force of volunteers to make sure no one is left behind. Yeah, 12,000 or so of us, I think, have signed up uh, to that. Uh, but, you know, I've got mates, I was talking to one, his... Uh, First floor went under, not the second floor this time. But he's got no power, got no water. I mean, there's logistical difficulties in doing the full-blown clean-up. And I guess other authorities are trying to get that water and power on. It's hard to believe with all the water lying around that water isn't connected to some parts uh, and power isn't able to be safely put on as well. Yeah, well, that's the thing. One of the things that is, um, I guess, linked to Brisbane River flooding in particular is just the mud. Uh, it's that mud that washes down from the upper catchment um, from a lot of those rich farming areas and it is thick. Yeah. Uh, I was out in it today and, and you know, that thick mud and it, then it hardens up almost like concrete as well. And so that's a, a massive yeah. task. And if you've got no power, um, then it's pretty difficult to get the gurney out. Um, you know, people are trying to get generators to, to do that. Um, so, yeah, it's a real challenge. A lot of areas still without power. Uh, the figures I heard yesterday were 16,000 properties without power in Brisbane, and even more than that, probably double that around South East Queensland. 
Yeah, I, th I found it amazing because I made a mana over at Rockley, as you said, one of those major list logistic areas. Uh, got a factory. It's probably one of, going to be one of the last ones to come out of the water. And across the road is a major substation. It's going to be one of the last things to come out of the water. I don't know why no one has done something about building these things up and out of the floodplain. But, look, we, we won't get into that tonight. I know the Deputy Premier says some things shouldn't be built here and some things shouldn't be built there. Let's not play the politics of it other than to say... Surely the feds can fund you directly. The Brisbane City Council, you're the Lord Mayor, you've got, you've got the, the biggest authority of any local government organisation in Australia. Surely you're big enough to be trusted with direct funding, not have to wait for the states to pass it on. Are you satisfied you're going to get the money you need as soon as you need it? Well, look, uh, so far the signs are good. Um, we've been advised today that there's a, a $10 million upfront payment coming our way uh, in the coming days. Uh, that's uh, federal and state funding that's come through. So look, it, the signs are positive, but, yeah, certainly, look, we've in the past had direct funding. Um, Brisbane City Council is a, is a council that has built major infrastructure before, like um, toll road tunnels and bridges, uh, so there's been federal funding paid directly to us in the past. In fact, 500 million in one in one hit. Uh, so yes, yeah, certainly, uh, yeah. you know that could be a streamlined way of doing it. But in the end, all the signs are looking good at the moment. So that's a positive thing. Okay, let's work on the positive, Adrian Schrenner. I don't want to put words in your mouth at all. I'll. Uh... I'll, however, be sure to be available if you, you know, if you want to, to talk about it, if there's any delays, because you've led from the front and well done to you, mate. I've known you a long time, as you know, as many people know, and I'm very proud uh, of the work you've done over this past week. Congratulations to you, Adrian. Well done to you and your well, thanks. Yeah, no, we're, we're all doing our best. Uh, there's a lot to be done, um, but, you know, it's that community spirit that really gives you heart. It's, you know, there's a lot of places in the world where you would see uh, mass-scale looting um, when something like this happens. We've nabbed one or two people, or the police have, but in the main, the big yeah. story to come out is people helping each other.